Welcome to the Invincipod. I'm Ralph. I'm James. And today we're going to actually talk about that trailer. Yeah, we're not just going to go through the cast. <laughs> yeah, you know what's funny is we recorded our last episode where we were supposed to talk about the trailer. And then after we're done <laughs> recording, we recorded the intro saying that we were going to talk about the trailer full well knowing that we didn't talk about the trailer during the record. It. No. I don't know why we mentioned the trailer at all in that intro. Um, I, think, I think we were just so excited about the show. I think so. I think so. And yeah. excited because now we have a date. We do. We, we know we when it's coming out. Clip. And we got at the end of that there a release date, which was March 23rd. Is that 26th. right? 26th. 26th. I knew it was the 20 something. Yeah. Which is the same day that Godzilla versus Kong came out. And I'm like, great. My Kaiju podcast has <laughs> to start up the same time, but then they push that back a week. Um, do we have, okay. any, do we have any information on, is this show going to be dropped in its entirety or is it going to be weekly? Cause I didn't even think I about don't that. Know. I, I, <laughs> Amazon, the way Amazon have been releasing everything recently, it has been weekly. Or they'll do okay. like a couple of episodes at the start of the season and then they'll release weekly. Uh, I'm watching The Expanse at the moment over there, uh, which wraps up, I think, next week. And I think they did the first four episodes of that this season uh, like all in one hit on the release day. And then okay. they've released weekly since then. So they, because it's a new show, they might do something similar, like get people in the door. I don't, well, I mean, it's what, I think it's eight episodes according to IMDb, and I think they're yeah. an hour-long episodes. So, yeah, they, they can tell enough of the story in yeah. those eight episodes. But, so they, they don't they can need tell, to be struggling. But they can probably release some weekly clips. The thing is, like, I don't, the way I assume this podcast was going to go is they'd release one episode, we'd do a podcast, then episode two would be the following week. But I've never podcasted for a TV show that's dropped all at once. Yeah, I haven't. I haven't done anything like it's, so, it's one of those things. I feel like shows like that often get lost because right. people watch them at their own pace, but there's right. not like that cultural conversation going on. Yeah, that's why I got into when I first got into podcasting back in 2006. We're coming up on my 15 year anniversary of podcasting. Uh, um, that's and here's a little bonus for anybody who used to listen to that show. We should have a 15 year anniversary episode for you in April. We should. Amazing. But that was lost and it came out weekly and it yeah. gave you time to think about it. Um, and then I do uh, Mandalorian, I think is the only, the second show I've ever covered also released weekly. So mm. I don't know. I feel like I prefer it. I feel like we, we had such a, a glut of shows that were dropped all at once, but I like from going through Mandalorian and talking about it weekly and talking about it on your show as well there. And I rewatched lost and I'm listening to another lost podcast where they're going through it weekly. And it's, it's so much better because you can have conversations. You can theorize about things. Right. You can stay excited about it as opposed to binging it all in like a night or a week or whatever. Right. And then it's like, yeah, okay, cool. That's done now for a year or two years or whatever. And then what's funny about invincible is if it sticks closely to the book, we won't have too much speculating if we know kind of where the story's going already. Like we, yeah. we both assume the ending of season one will be the big twist that came in the third trade of invincible. Um, yeah. so watching this show, we won't be like, Oh, I suspect that this character is a bad guy. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like we can't, we won't yeah, be able definitely. to do that. So it's, it's going to be interesting. I feel like even if they do drop them all at once, I feel like, doing a weekly conversation for the show would be okay. It'll keep it going. I, I, yeah. I think it'll be good. Yeah. And yeah. like we can just do an episode a week. Right. And I think that will help. Like if people are interested in the show, it'll keep them going and like they can watch along at whatever pace they want. But yeah. Right. I like and then idea. would you be able to, would you binge watch all of them and just talk about episode one, one week? I don't think I, I think I would try and watch an episode and then talk about it. Yeah, I think so I think too. that's how I would want to do it. But what's good for us is a, from a recording standpoint, we could watch them in eight days and record every single day we of the week. We could <laughs> Just knock them out. Definitely. I don't Definitely. know. If, Definitely. Just I don't before know if we schedules. started recording, I was, I was telling Ralph that I just started a new job. And yeah, if it doesn't work out scheduling, that would be really handy for me. Yeah. Even if they just do a few at the start, like we can get a few episodes banked. So that'd be really good. Yeah. 
uh, banking episodes is the greatest thing ever. I love oh, banking I know. episodes because there's nothing. I'm, there's I'm, I, I'm not the biggest fan of like sporadic podcast releases. I like scheduled no, that's the podcast. That we've got releases. at the moment with uh, uh, Lonely Boys Meets World, my other show that I do, uh, is all of us got really busy over Christmas and like we all had a load of stuff going on that we sort of had to take a break and because of that we are we haven't had an episode out since i think the end of november we've mm-hmm. got two recorded but we haven't released one for so long now and i'm just like oh, i'm itching to get them back <laughs> and get the regularity going whereas another show that i'm working on yeah yeah we're recorded like once a week or so and we haven't done anything with it yet it's just sitting there and we'll get 20 30 or something episodes recorded before we release i'm excited back when i started kaiju podcast with jorge um, we started recording mm. like Thanksgiving weekend, which is the end of November, um, with the yep. with the um, schedule set in place to start at the beginning of the following year. So we had recorded a couple episodes in advance. And what was great about that is we would record two episodes at a time. So we do like an hour oh, long great. or two hour long recording session, but then release every other week. So each recording course, session, yeah. each recording session equals a month. A- it knocked off a month of oh, that's great. So doing it that way, like, like we were really great. Cause I work, I work third shift as well. So I'm working at night mm. and he works, he was working on a TV show. He was working on Hawaii five Oh and his, like our schedules were not compatible, but we never once missed <laughs> our deadline because we would bank. Yeah. You episodes. went through an entire run, didn't you? Four yeah. years, that's four amazing. years straight without a single, without a single missed date. Um, Except the last show, the last show, <laughs> there was something, there was something going on with, we posted the show, we scheduled the show to post and it went up on the site and yep. it went out to social network. And so I'm like, okay, cool. It's there. And then like two days later, I'm like, where's my show? And nobody even <laughs> said, Hey dude, where's the show? <laughs> I'm like, you guys are killing me. Um, so I went and I, re-uploaded it and it worked but yeah it was weird but i'm I, it was it was ready to go it made it made it on the youtube channel at the same time okay. so okay so at the, at least, the correct time maybe people just went there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah um and this okay. show's gonna be on youtube as well i'm gonna do that take the audio from this and post it to to youtube um we already put our our secret origin episodes up there our, our episode Great. zero yep this is episode 0.1 I'm, I'm going to call this the 0.1 because I want yeah. our episodes to be, to match one, up. One to one. Definitely. Yeah. I agree with that. Um, yeah. So yeah, youtube.com slash Invincipod. You'll be able to, if you, for some reason people like listening on YouTube. I yeah. I've, I've noticed the same thing. People, I think they just have it on in the background while they're doing other stuff. Maybe. Yeah. Could be. If they're already working on the computer, then, you know, Yeah, it's also a catch all. Like not everyone uses iTunes or Apple music or whatever it is. Apple podcasts mm. now. So I don't know. I do. I still much prefer the Apple Podcast system, but that's just I think because yeah. I've been using it for so long. What, Since two thousand six, yeah, <laughs> yeah, there. So, oh man, I don't know. That's always my go-to. But when people sort of, I know we've put up all of our other show on uh, Spotify, and a lot of people listen to it there. So yeah, it's just whatever people's preferences, isn't it? So. Right, and I like to give as many options as I can. So Same. obviously. Yeah. You're listening to this, so you found us somehow. <laughs> so. Yeah, maybe you're listening to it on the in in your Tesla on your the Tesla specific one. Ooh. That's a weird one that I I decided to put our show up on just in case someone with a Tesla wanted to listen. <laughs> hey, there's a lot of Teslas on the road. There is. The, well, they've got yeah, a crossover to more in, more in, it, Invincible yeah. fans. <laughs> there's gonna be at least one or two. Do you think like you? Do you think so, like Kirkman, I was gonna say? Do you think Kirkman or Otley have a Tesla? Chances are, maybe. maybe. Yeah, maybe. I Seth Rogen probably does, doesn't he? I bet you he does. And as yeah. far as I know, there's there's only two Invincible podcasts that I can think of that they. I mean, this <laughs> is the only one. The invi- <laughs> <laughs> this is like the. Uh, this is like show specific though, like where mm. I mean. Depending on how it goes, we might delve into the books, maybe as like hiatus episodes, because who knows if we're getting a season two. And if yeah. we do, when's that going to happen? We've waited so long for season one. Yeah. So 
Um, <laughs> and I need to reacquaint myself with the book. I, I, I started to do a reread. I need to keep going because it's been so long since <laughs> I read the first that, issue. Cause I did exactly the same thing. I, I read the first trade again and then I was like, Oh yeah, no, cool. And I picked up the second one and it's literally it sat by the side of my bed since we recorded that first episode. <laughs> I sold all my trades. I sold all my trades to get an iPad so I can get them digitally. So I repurchased them all on the iPad and I have them like, I have like something like the first five trades and then I have issues like individual issues from like 75 to the end. <laughs> so there's like a yeah, small gap in cool. the middle there of like, I need like two trades and I'm just waiting for those prices to drop and then I'll re 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 So I, I, I had a look on, uh, I think it was after that first episode that we did on Comixology, they had all of the compendiums for super cheap. So I just went in and I picked up all three of those, three or four, however many it is. And I've got them on my Kindle tablet and I've got so much time now with my new job to read comics or whatever at work so i think i'm just gonna plow through the whole lot like i read I'm... half a star wars book in like half a shift the other night <laughs> i feel like i need okay so comicsology follows me for some reason i should go on twitter and tell them i have this many ep issues of invincible can i trade these you know <laughs> 75 issues for like a compendium version so yeah. I don't have, but the thing is with the individual issues is you get the, the invincibles, the, the, uh, the pen the back matter stuff. Yeah. All the, uh, all the, yeah. the, the questions, the, um, the mail in stuff, which is kind of fun. And then now it makes me want to like ditch the trades I have and get the individual issues, <laughs> but we'll see. <laughs> Cause those are always fun. It's a lot of effort. I mean, it's, yeah, they are great. And Kirkman was always, he always had a good letters column in whatever yeah, book he did. Right. Um, it was the same with uh, Walking Dead. Uh, Cena Grace was editing both those two books for a while. And like he was, he would jump in and they'd always have like a bit of a back, back and, and forth, forth in the in the answers for the questions. And they'd, they'd be ribbing each other and it's good fun. I think I mentioned this last time I read the first 11 Walking Dead trades like in a week or two. And then just stopped. Yeah. I don't know what happened. I just <laughs> stopped. I, th I yeah. I think we both had the same sort of thing. Where it was just like, yeah, I, I'm done. I'm done with yeah. this. I, it wasn't that it was bad. I enjoyed no. it, but I was no. just like, yeah, I don't, I don't need any more. It was, it was yeah. And um, yeah, I never stopped Invincible though. Love it. No, I mean, I I still need to finish it up because as we talked about in the last episode, I I dropped off at one point and then. Have been meaning to catch up, but I've decided to just go through it all from all the start again. and my catch up. But I it's haven't a, finished it yet. I don't even know. Like I was, I think two or three trades worth that I don't even know about, which is weird. So weird. I was, I was in bed reading, and I, I told my wife, I said, "Okay, I'm reading the last Invincible ever." Kind of like as a <laughs> don't fucking bother me. This yeah, is, yeah, this, yeah. This next, this next ten minutes, I need to be <laughs> left alone so I, I can enjoy this. Used to this. <laughs> so, um. It's a good, it's a good ending. It really is. So, uh, it's a, uh, it's a landing that's stuck and, uh, I, I look forward to hearing your thoughts. Yeah. Well, I think before we get too far off and don't talk about the trailer, we should jump into this trailer cause I've, I've got it playing it over here at the moment I had, and mm. it's just, it's amazing. I like, I can't <laughs> stop looking at it cause it looks more than any other adaption of anything film like film tv anything it just looks like the book come to life right and right now i have i have it up as well but i have it paused um i have it on my okay i, I ripped it onto to um to quicktime and so i can just kind of cool. scrub through it with my magic mouse because i'm a mac dude cool but well just... I've, I've got it up i haven't ripped it but i've got it up so if you want to pause at any point just give me a time code and but I'll even though even the first frame is uh is nolan flying in space yeah and it is like somehow it's like cory walker's art but even cleaner yeah and ryan, yeah, Otley, ryan otley too like i don't know how you're able to make invincible look cleaner They've, right. they've, they've somehow blended the two perfectly it's it's not fully walker it's not fully otley it's it is somewhere in between and, and it, yeah it's just so clean 
just in the first shot alone. So you got the perfect pose because I'm, I like animation. So I'm all about you, you as animation, um, they teach you, you want to hit your poses and essentially every character, you want to know what they're doing. If, if you were to take that same drawing in silhouette, so you'll never okay. see, you'll never really see like an uh, image of Mickey mouse where his hands like over his chest, they'll both be out. So the silhouette, you can kind of see the different poses. Old... Yeah. So this pose of Nolan with his hands out and then it goes into, it, it kind of goes into a different pose looking up from his, from his neck, like just as like, you can so see how like his arms perfect. have moved and he's sort of gone into that linear. Yeah. Flight and mode. it just shows his power. Like anytime you look up yeah. at a character, it shows it's a it's a show of power. Anytime you look down on a character, it's a show of weakness. So just seeing him from that angle just shows power. But just even like the shadows and the and the paintwork, um, I'm assuming they're doing digital paint, but it still has that feel of um, who does the colors on the book? Is it Crabtree? No, uh, it's it's been uh, a, it's been a couple people, but yeah, it still matches that style from Invincible. Like it may not be as detailed shadows and light, but it still has the same feel. And um, it was Crabtree. Yeah, it just <laughs> it just looks so clean, and his outfit looks perfect. Um, this is obviously it's not his Omni Man outfit. This is more of his Viltrumite right sort of suit. So so this looks like it's this... him coming to Earth for the first time. Yeah, I was going to say, this feels like it's probably when we're getting his origin story. We're getting him telling Mark about his origins and how he came to Earth and everything. Right. And the look on his face is like almost, it's like determination. It's a little, uh, yeah. it, it, I, I'm just going to say determination. Well, Cause it, we'll doesn't look, it doesn't look angry. It doesn't look oh, hopeful. He's got it, a mission. He's a man on a mission and he's, he's flying to Earth to, to do a thing. And his and his eyebrow is cocked just a little bit because there's like a little bit of curiosity in there. Like whoever's drawing this stuff, whoever's doing show running and, oh. and filling out doing the storyboards and stuff. I mean, this look is amazing, and it's fans so of fans of the comic know exactly what that look is. One hundred percent, so good. Um, and I mean that mustache. We we can't jump away from so talking good. about the look of Nolan without talking about that glorious, glorious mustache. Yeah, like I, 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 my hope is that this mustache is up there with like Ron Swanson and other uh, Magnum PI, like TV mustaches. Like right. it needs to be on that Mount Rushmore of TV it's, mustaches. It's, it's funny that I'm so used to this book and this character that I never really thought like yeah. how many superheroes have mustaches. Not even Wolverine, who's like I mean, known they, for his they hair. They digitally removed Superman, didn't they? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Man, I can't they should wait. have left it in. I, that was, that was, that would have been the that would have been the only thing that made me watch that movie is if they'd left in Henry Cavill's mustache. Well, that's the problem <laughs> is the mustache was only there for the reshoots and all that reshoot stuff's getting tossed <laughs> out. But I mean, Superman with a mustache would be awesome. But that's only because I know Omni Man, right? But that's it. That is what we've got. <laughs> that is Omni Man. Is Superman with a mustache? Um, the second bit we have here is the high school, and I just realized. That it's still called Reginald Bell Johnson High School. <laughs> it says great. it right there on the marquee. <laughs> yeah. Such a it was always one of those things that I thought was so weird in the book. Just because I know who Reginald Bell Johnson is. Um <laughs> but it's then, such a the, Kirkman joke. It's such a like like it's a very Kirkman in joke. That and what's funny loves. is they're doubling down on it. Like they're not yeah. shying away from it in the in the show, which makes me believe like they're doing it right. Yeah, and the funny I thing... think they'll have all of those little things. Obviously, there might be a few things that they can't do for licensing, um, but it's it's that same sort of thing. Do you think we'll see Bill and Ted and Jane Silent Bob in the background? Oh, I could see it. Maybe I could see it. I could see it. Like they can get away with that sort of stuff in animation, right? So, like it doesn't. Like, like, it would be great. They could just be wearing the similar outfits. It doesn't have to be. You know, yeah. I think the whole thing with licensing is that you can't sell something from another property, but I yeah. think it could show up in the background. Hopefully we'll see. It'll be interesting to see how they go. Um, and if there's any sort of new in the last, what almost 20 years of this book, see if there's well, that anybody. Was what I was... Yeah. God. Yeah. New pop culture well, that's what references. I, was... that I wanted to bring up, like obviously a lot of the references and stuff were relevant for the time, 
whereas now we are 10 i was i thought 10 but no you're right it's closer to 20 um years away from the start of this book it really is isn't it it's gonna be 20 years in a couple yeah. of time yeah, yeah. jeez um oh, that's <laughs> depressing. but looking at this um, <laughs> they have a they have a reginald bell johnson flag out front of the yeah. school now usually in america i think if you were to have a second flag it would be the state and i don't okay. remember if invincible lives in a specific state like he's not in New York or Jersey or something, right? No, it's it always like because of the bridge and everything where they've got their hideout for a little while. It always sort of felt Californian to me, but like mm-hmm. it's because the bridge feels like it should be the Golden Gate, but it's not. It's definitely not San Francisco, right. but it's. I think it's just generic, generic West Coast. But I need that. How I've always felt. I need that Reginald Vell Johnson logo Why? on a shirt. It just says RVJ on a yellow writing in a, on a green background. Yep. <laughs> it would it would make for like a good polo shirt, I think, like with it just over the pocket or something. Yeah. Oh, it's like a little monogram. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's just something subtle. <laughs> that's that's the sort of shirt that they need, definitely. Oh, but I mean, that's the other thing with it being on Amazon. Amazon loves to merchandise their stuff, so we should oh, be getting a lot of cool Amazon merch. Hopefully. Uh, we get some shots of Mark at school. His outfit looks a little more modern, I think, than maybe the original comic. I don't remember what he wore, but I do I like his, what he was wearing. At school. I like he's wearing his shirts untucked, so he's still kind of, yep. kind of nerdy, a bit schleppy, yeah. Um, and ah, uh, his friend—I can't remember his friend's name—but <laughs> he's got the same hair. He's got that that you know. He's the got tux. the curtains. Yeah. Yeah. He's got yeah, the curtains. Yeah. Maybe they've given him a bit, bit of an undercut to modernize it, but you know, I think it's like, you can tell it's him, right? Um, but yeah, like talking about his outfit and everything, it's it's making me go, yeah. So I think they are gonna update it. It's not gonna be set in the early two thousands anymore. It's gonna be now. So right. some of the references might have been updated and stuff, some like fashion and stuff like that. But your core characters they're universal like right. they are designed to be anytime any place so they won't need to do too much with them right and his outfit kind of has the colors for invincible um the blues the, the, the kind yellow of the blue there and white well. stripe yeah um yeah. we get the classic scene of mark standing on his roof outside his bedroom and just his yep. pajama pants so this leads me leads me to believe that it's like a pretty close so far, everything seems like it's a really close adaptation to the book. This was the shot. This was the one that made me go, oh, they're sticking super close. Because the house is like, it's got that, you know, he can climb out of his bedroom onto the roof sort of right. design to it. And it's like, yeah, he's doing that doing that thing where he tries to fly for the first time. Right. I don't know how many houses have that, but I'm jealous of it. Yeah, it always screams Flight of the Navigator to me. I don't know why. It's been a long time since I've seen that movie, but I feel like that, that was... In Flight of the Navigator, I watched it within quarantine time. Um, okay, so in the last year, I don't. Yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember the roof being like that, but uh, it <laughs> that movie's great. I still love it. Yeah, it's um, great. <laughs> I might have to read it. Yeah, I could see something like this in Explorers. Anytime, like in those '80s kids were able to sneak out at night. Uh, when I was a kid, I was they able to. Flat. I figured out how to open my locked bedroom window from the outside. Okay. And I used to just sneak in at night um, just because I could. <laughs> I had a key to yeah. the house and See, I was I was old enough to go it's out. But... It's a weird thing for me. But like, they're not very common. Flat roofs like that aren't very common at all in the UK. But I had one in like my oh. early, early years growing up. We had a flat roof. It was above our kitchen. And from my that side of the house would have been my brother's room you could climb out of it out of his bedroom onto this flat roof so we do that all the time all of us and like our house was the house that everyone came to all of my brother's friends all of my sister's mm-hmm. friends and so this flat roof just became a place that people hung out so it felt normal to me when i'd see it on tv whereas it was only when i moved and or I'd see other houses that i was just like oh shit that was kind of special that we had one of those <laughs> yeah i'm jealous but a friend of a friend of my brother's did jump off of it at one point and broke his back when he was 16 years old. So Don't maybe not the best thing. Yeah, no. Yeah, it's I mean, funny. He tried could, to fly. 
He What's funny is they would put a, in uh, in America. I don't know about over there. They would have something that says "Do not attempt at home." Whenever you see like a superhero like this jumping off a roof, they'll have to like explain that to you. Um, there was just a tweet yep. from Invincible HQ, I believe, that said something to the effect of "We can't wait for kids to see our very not PG show." And <laughs> they like I, the thing I love about this is like is I could see like parents watching with their kids getting up to this point and being like, okay, he's a superhero. Uh-huh. Don't jump off the roof. <laughs> and then in like yep. the next episode, he's going to have his head crushed and his eyeball fly out in space and blood <laughs> everywhere. And it's like, Oh, maybe it's not for kids. Um, <laughs> yeah, this definitely isn't. You thought that, yeah, they all thought that it had a rating for him jumping off of roofs and stuff where it's really not the case. That yeah. is so tame. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to see what they have in store. Um, the next uh, the, scene, I it's insane. The next scene is uh, Nolan and Mark having a catch with the baseball. Now, this was the extended clip. Yeah. You want to talk about the extended clip? Yeah, that so we could we could talk about the extended version of this scene. Um, so in the trailer, we just get the "Can you hear it?" from Nolan talking about the baseball coming towards Mark. Right. Um, but yeah, in the extended scene, we get. I mean, as far as I can remember, the full scene from the comic book. Right. Where. Mark is nervous. He's he's knows that he's got powers now. He can fly now comfortably, um, but he's unsure of himself. Right. So he's he's worried and he's scared that he won't be able to live up to his, what his dad expects from him, and if he can really be a superhero. And yeah, Nolan basically is just explaining. It's like, look, kids your age always think that they're invincible, and it's a detriment to them. Right. Whereas you actually are invincible. So basically, go do something good with it, and then he get that's where he gets the idea, the name for the name, and, the and then we get to go see him full on get the suit made. Um, yeah, and we get our first little hint. We get our first voice acting that isn't uh, one of these two, and we get obviously Mark Hamill. Right, and he sounds great, and he sounds perfect. I mean, it's it's one of those things that we've all heard Mark Hamill do enough voice work over the years to go, oh, cool, that's Mark. But right. it, it's not distracting. Like, he still no. fits Art Rosenbaum perfectly. Uh, yeah, and I feel like the only reason why I knew is Mark Hamill, A, because we knew it was Mark Hamill, but B, because I'm like, oh, that's Mark Hamill. Let me listen for it. I yeah. think in the show, I'm, yeah, I'm going to, I think in the show, I'm going to set it aside. He did voice work in uh, the Dark Crystal series for Netflix. Uh, he played okay. the science officer, the Skeksis. And at first, I'm like, oh, that's Mark Hamill. <laughs> but then as the series went on, I, I just forgot. Um, yeah. Really, really cool dude. But I mean, he played my favorite character, fic, fic, fictional character of all time. Yep. And so it's yeah, easy to recognize his voice. It's hard to separate, but it's also, I think it's a testament to good voice acting in general when you can, you know who it is. And when we talked about the entire list and they're all pretty much known people, yeah. but it's a testament when they can, uh, to the animation and to the voice acting, when, you can just go, no, this is that character. This right. isn't that person playing a role. This is that right. character. And his design um, is so perfect to the book that I now have yeah. a voice for when I yeah. read the book, which is great. Definitely. I'm, I'm interested to continue reading the book um, as we watch the series to see if they sound different than mm. what I thought they uh, sounded I think like. I'm like, yeah, that's, oh, that's tempting now to sort of almost read along. Right as as close to the show as possible right oh we'll see yeah i might do that um maybe i'm not the biggest fan of watching extended clips mostly because, no like, i mean i it's i it watched, it. Takes I watched up, it a couple of times oh i just watched the once and i'm like it's showing too much but i've seen it all in yeah. the book already so i'm like okay i'm yeah, fine with it. it uh at disneyland uh they did a preview for incredibles 2 and i'm like oh cool let's okay. go check that out and they show like a bit of Incredibles 2, but then they showed like straight eight minutes of footage from the movie. And I'm like, Oh my God. So when I see the movie, I'm just going to be sitting there being like, I already saw this. Like, but this, <laughs> this, this was fine because I've read the book and I've seen the scene before, but, and it was really cool to see it played out once again, just clean, clean art. Yeah. Just so and just clean. bright. It's bright colors. Like That's... I love that it's daytime and everything like that. It's, it's one of the things that invincible did really well. Right. The, uh, it's, uh, so much of it is during the day. It's bright sunlight and everything. It's not dark and gritty at all. And that's why when those moments <laughs> of hyperviolence come through, 
god you see everything and it's right. it's grim <laughs> it hits you hard because you don't the way the book is presented and the way it looks it almost looks like a silver age book with the amount of color yeah. that's poured into the costumes and stuff you don't expect that so when it happens that's another dose of whoa yeah violence yeah like not to not even to mention you know that it's just takes place you know, mostly during the day and it's bright but it literally just looks out of place and that makes you like it gives you the perfect response i feel if this book was dark and you saw blood you'd be like yeah of course but it's that's think... what's going to deceive a lot of parents and i cannot yeah. i cannot wait to see they, they like the I, reaction i'll be so curious to see how much of a warning they have like pre credits or whatever it's just like this is not a show for kids right um because it really is not and um, i hope i hope like i kind of want to see and probably i bet you kirkman's the same way how parental <laughs> groups are going to react to this oh you know he's he wants it he wants <laughs> them to see it because he just wants that like because yeah. if you get parent parental groups going online and bashing this move the show for being so violent that's going to get us a season yeah. two <laughs> it is the best publicity they can do right and it says uh, and yeah. every ad is gonna say from robert kirkman the creator of walking dead like think about that yep. like you gotta yeah. realize something's yeah. up exactly yeah um i mean i think the most pg like nice comic he ever did was like what tech jacket which was still in the same universe but yeah i it mean was, there's it was there's like super dinosaur and i mean yeah other than the ones that were specifically like, <laughs> right <laughs> kids comics what is the God, yeah i love astounding wolfman I, I hope that this show is so big that we get to the point where we get an astounding wolfman series we get wolfman we get tech jacket we get uh all of the spin-offs like everything in the invincible universe right and i haven't read tech okay. jacket i have issue number one sitting in my drawer i somehow ended up with a copy of issue number one um i, I should read it i read it when i was at the shop i I never bought it and I can't really remember much of it, but it's a character that crossed over a few times. Right. And when they do cross over, there's so many characters invincible in invincible that yeah. it's like, they just are another person that's a superhero. So I don't really like, I wasn't like, Oh, okay. Like Brit and battle Pope. And like, anytime like someone just yeah. kind of shows up, I'm just like, Oh, that's somebody <laughs> else. Does battle Pope show up? In invincible? I don't know if he's gotta be somewhere. Right. Maybe in the background or maybe like on a screen somewhere, but I don't remember Battle Pope <laughs> showing up. That would be a little bit different. Right. I feel like Battle Pope's in his own little corner of Kirkman's universe. I could see a character in Invincible wearing a Battle Pope shirt or something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's like the, it's the Tarantino sort of movie movie universe, Ooh. isn't it? Do you think we'll get like maybe in within the show on a TV screen like a Science Dog cartoon? Science Dog. I, I think he'll be reading Science Dog throughout um or get what was it every seven issues a science dog or every 10 they had a science dog story at the end of the, at the end of the issue there was wasn't there yeah God, there was, a, there was that. a specific amount like it was like 20 or 25 yeah. um Something. that would be great if at like the end of each season they had a little snippet of a science dog cartoon <laughs> and then amazing. once the, once they're all done you could piece them together um yeah or they just put it out as a special or something that was my favorite thing about i only watched the first season of walking dead and that was my favorite thing was that Kara wore a science dog shirt. Yeah. And, like uh, it was it was a nod to those of us who sort of had yeah. read that and or knew the sort of the Kirkman world. Yeah, no, it's good. <laughs> so we get Mark flying from his rooftop and tumbling with the seven forty seven, which the animation on this, I, I'm just scrolling through almost frame by frame. Um I'm assuming that is a CG plane. But it still has that clean Walker Otley sort of design to it, and it just melds in yeah, with the animation so it perfectly. It's Mark taking off from his rooftop, and it's it's exactly what you were saying, like that pose where his his arms are out, his right. knees crooked, and it's like yeah, you could see that in the silhouette, and you'd know exactly what was happening. And the sort of um, it's it's. It's the same pose, essentially, that um, Nolan has, but we're seeing it from sort of looking down on him now because he's, you know, he's, he's coming up at the frame. Yeah. And he's, he's still learning, so he's not as powerful as Nolan. Right. And I like the effects work on the sort of breaking the sound barrier kind of energy that flies off of him and then sort of a mm. wind, sort of a wind, rip, like, 
percussion coming off of that like all of that stuff oh my gosh it looks so good and everything is i can't i can't stress enough how everything looks so clean it just even (laughs) even the shot it's gonna become a theme the show i think (laughs) well yeah i mean even the shot it's this wide shot of um just the clouds with the moon and how small mark is is such a powerful shot it shows like and he's in his pajama bottoms so (laughs) it's so cool because it's like all of us like if we weren't doing Skype video for this, I'd probably just be <laughs> in my pajama bottoms. Like it's something we all do is just, maybe it's too hot at night. We Sounds just sleep right. in our pajama bottoms. Um, yeah. And then to see him in this big, huge night sky, um, it's like, oh man, I wish I could be that guy. I wish I could fly around. Yeah. He's just like me, but he I mean, I to fly I, around. I wish I was that ripped at 17. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> But then, it, but then it's cut. <laughs> that powerfulness is cut by this plane getting in the way. Well, I guess Mark yeah. is in the way, and then him tumbling back <laughs> to Earth. So it it knocks him down a peg, like mm. like it's one of those things where he thinks, yeah, you are all powerful, but guess what? You're not. Well, you're in, you're invincible, but emotionally, yeah, he can stuff take can this, happen. this yeah. landing where you know you see all the dust and everything come up. It's like. It's a it's a hard landing that would <laughs> would knock out or kill anyone, but the, you know he can brush it off because he is invincible. Right. Um, it says from Robert Kirkman. We all know who that is. And then yeah, we get to see him in the suit. Yeah. Oh my gosh! It yeah, it's so good. it's so good. Like I can't like the the first couple shots look straight up like Corey Walker. Yeah. Where he's looking Definitely. at his hands. Yeah, uh, and even just the the one shot on his face as well, right. like before that, before we get there. And, and Corey it's, Walker did. I his, mean, it, the character design, right? He did. Corey Walker was working on the character design for the show, if I'm not mistaken. I, yeah, I think. I mean, you said that. You said that in the last episode that we did. Yeah, that yeah. sounds right. Oh, and then just these um, shots of him. Those, him. It's so nice, isn't it? Because like, obviously, Corey Walker only did the first six issues. Right. Um, and something similar happened with um walking dead as well but it feels like instead of that relationship souring between kirkman and his artist of the first six issues of an ongoing series him and Corey walker seem to have remained tight and so that it was just a scheduling thing whereas now Corey walker would he'd still pop in and do odd odd issues of invincible throughout i want to say he does the still working he does the penultimate um storyline so he does the storyline oh, awesome. while um, while Otley was working on oh, the yes. finale, because th- that last storyline in the book is like Otley going full Otley with details everywhere mm-hmm. and stuff. So you'll get to that. But Corey Walker was awesome. was working on the the seven issues right before that. So he does make a return, and his art I want to say towards the end of the series, um it's crazy because it still looks like Corey Walker, but I feel yeah. like there may be a little bit of a oddly influence in there too. Um, interesting. It's, it's really interesting reading those first seven issues and then going towards the end of the book. Was it one forty? Was well, the even, last? Yeah. And, even when he pop in like throughout, like doing odd issues here or there or like doing stuff. I think they did like a couple of specials where Corey Walker would do the art and you could see that like he was getting better progressively. Like right. there's, those first six issues are great. They are very much his style, but yeah, it became it very much became Otley's book. I feel like right. afterwards, right. Um, with so much of it. And I feel like with Corey Walker's designs for the show, it's definitely him, but it honors Otley. Like it feels like both of them mixed together. It's like the perfect marriage. Yeah, um, yeah. I and- mean, and they worked on a, like a, a one-off. The, the was it? Uh, sea bear versus grizzly shark special that they did <laughs> right where they sort of they just drew each other's like nonsense characters and like they put them both in one book so like it's it's nice that they are obviously friends and they've collaborated and stuff in the past right um these shots of invincible flying through the city mm. um i love the the background art almost looks like it was painted over a photo or something like the backgrounds look so nice. Um, Oh, I wanted to say that. Okay. We'll get to it in a little bit that I believe this takes place in Chicago, this scene, at least. 
Okay, which scene I'll, I'll... where he's fighting? Yeah, who's he fighting here? This is oh, a. Oh yeah, no, I can see it. It's, that does look like Chicago. There is a uh, this shot when he is coming down to Earth from space, which is my favorite shot of the trailer. Is just Mark in the top mm. left corner, um, coming straight down into the city, and you just see the skyline kind of coming up behind. I believe yeah. that building is in Chicago, and I, you know what? Now I think about it, it may not be. <laughs> it, it, looks it looks like Willis familiar. Tower, like, it but looks... it's shorter than yeah. the building next to it, so it's not Willis Tower. <laughs> so I could be completely wrong. Um, also, but I don't know. There's water on all sides. It could easily be Chicago. It could be any city. Uh, you know, maybe it's... that's the thing. It could be any city. Yeah, is... it's it's any USA. We're gonna watch the show, and it's just gonna flat us tell us where it is, and we're gonna be like, "Oh yeah, we're stupid." <laughs> um. Who is he fighting here with the with the ray gun arm? It's been so long since I've read the the first issues. I don't remember all the characters' names, especially Same. the sort of side. There's of so villains. many villains. Um, there are so many. Let's have a look. I've got the the list up here. But what's great about uh, this shot? Cast. What's great about this shot is he punches the red visor, the dude right in the face, and yeah. we see red chunks and the cracked visor. So. As far as this goes, that is just pieces of visor flying off. But we know, we know the blood's coming. Um, <laughs> There's assuming... a character listed here as Red Rush, and it might be. He's got a gun. And he's got red in his costume, and the beam he shoots is red. So, it, I mean, knowing comic books and knowing the way that uh, Kirkman designs his characters and creates characters, like it, it's, it's probably Red Rush. I feel Who's, like what I like, love about Walker and Otley is you know that Kirkman comes up with these pun names and tells them yeah. to go draw Red Rush or <laughs> Rexplode or something. And he just gets back like the crazy. He gets back like five pretty crazy designs and then one like off the rails nuts design. Yeah. And he's like, I want that one. That's really nuts. Yeah, he always goes with the the one that's just like out there. The characters are so cartoony and bright. And look at, yeah, this guy has this arm cannon in some sort of probably a heist, breaking the law in yeah. broad daylight. Yeah. Um, then we get some blood. We have uh, we Mark. Yeah, a little bit. Mark backhanding somebody. There we go. That's... Somebody in a suit with long hair. I don't know who that is. Um, he looks familiar. And again, I'm. I feel like <laughs> we both need to brush up. It's been since 2003, um, so I'm gonna at least. Yeah. I'm gonna read. Uh, by the time the show starts, I'm gonna read at least the first three trades. Because us Invincible fans know what yeah. happens after the third trade, and I feel like that's where a good place to start. Stop the first season would be. Like that would be, I think, so. the best place to stop. You know um, who I think that is? I think that's D.A. Sinclair. Okay. Who is listed here? Um, and it's been played by Ezra Miller. Uh, interestingly, he has and that, that long is, black hair. Uh, when when he's at college, when Mark is at college, he's uh, a villain that's introduced there. I was just reading up here. Um, he's a student who turns into a villain. Um, and probably right. deserves being backhanded. Yeah, so but th- it's a it's a character I think does become quite a recurring character throughout the series. And this is our first shot of Mark as invincible with blood all over his face and his little and uh, his glasses bubbles. Visors. Yeah, yeah. It cracks me up that he goes through so many suits. He there. It's rare <laughs> that we don't see him beat up or his suit torn up. Um. Mm. Maybe that's why I'm so into the way it looks with him being clean. Well, that's also sort of part <laughs> of the joke with Art Rosenberg, isn't it? It's like he's always having to go back to his costume maker because his costume's always getting fucked up. Right. Oh, it's so good. Um, so hopefully parents see this shot that lasts like, I don't know, a split second. <laughs> Half a frame. <laughs> and then we have another shot of Mark throwing what we believe is Red Rush. Um through the streets and then he picks yeah. up he picks up a cinder block or a piece of concrete that has rebar sticking out of it and mark is yeah. covered in blood and the color for this blood is so perfect it's <laughs> got that sort of 
slightly dried out dark maroon color to it um really striking I've got it freeze framed i've got it freeze framed on the next shot where we see the person who's getting hit by that cinder block and the blood it's like some of it is all like real clean but then you've got another bit that just looks like like splatter <laughs> Uh, right. and it looks like kind of blurry and out of focus and everything and it just the two combined uh, it's yeah, just yeah. like it's gruesome but yeah. when it's I, still this is nothing when i designed our podcast logo mm. it was just sort of the the chest part where the where the yellow and blue and black are with invincipod yeah. over it and i'm like it just looks too bland and so i put a big <laughs> fat <laughs> blood splatter on it and it really made the logo pop i think the logo yeah. looks really good i love it there's something about the, the there's something about the the red on his outfit that just it's almost part of his uniform like his yeah. like his uniform the the yellow blue and black i feel like needs something else a different like something because the the eye isn't so pronounced in his, the invincible the eye on his on his outfit yeah like the chest part of the yellow yeah. and the neck part of the yellow you can get away eye. with it not looking like an eye right but when you get uh, that like it's the same as the like image comics logo <laughs> right but when you get that red on it it feels like that's yeah. when the uniform is complete and it's almost like a yeah. rorschach it's like a constantly moving s shield on right shirt. yeah yeah and uh um and it's, I mean, it is one of those things. It's like if Mark gets in a fight and doesn't get bloody or someone in the fight doesn't get bloody, it's like, you know that it was a nothing sort of fight. It was like a, yeah, whatever, carry on, move on to the right. next thing straight away. So it looks like this fight has escalated because he's throwing the, the cinder block at an alien. Um, don't remember their yep. names. I'm really going to have to read up. Um, uh, one, of the, <laughs> one of the things I want to say about this podcast, too, is that um, I am not an invincible expert. I I love no, Invincible. I sure We're both fans, both big yeah. fans, but like they I mean clearly just from listening to this episode you <laughs> might have guessed that we don't remember every last detail. Yeah. Like it's been a long time since either of us have read through all of this. Right. So, you know, we're we're fans, we're here watching it along with you, hopefully. Right. Uh, and you probably know more than us. Right. <laughs> so, please I hope you don't get mad if we get a detail wrong. Um feel free to let us know. At Invincible Pod, I mean, or Invincible Pod, yeah, but um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I just I, I'm afraid because I'm stepping into this <laughs> into this podcast. And I'm like, listen, I love Invincible, I love it so much, but I'm also 44 years old and I've read this book over the last 20 years, and my mind isn't gonna uh, remember every little detail. So. Yeah. I've, I've... I've read a lot of books. Like, but, I've read a lot of comics. Right. I've read a lot of stuff. I've consumed a lot of media <laughs> in between. Like, I mean, I think I binge read the first probably six or seven trades worth of this series when I was working at the comic book shop. And that was a long time ago. Yeah. And, you know, I've drank a lot since then. I've lived a lot of a life <laughs> since then. So things, they just drop out of your memory. <laughs> right. So I'm going to reread it for sure. Before we start episode one, uh, like I said, the first three trades, because yeah, that's yeah. where you go. Who, what, we, what we are assuming season one will be. Yeah. For eight episodes. I think that's a great arc. Um, yeah. Whose head is getting crushed? Whose eyeball is popping out in this shot? Uh, do, do we want to say? Cause I've got an idea, but I don't know if we want to say, because based on the gloves who are doing the popping. Oh, I just assumed it was Mark, and that's stupid of me. Um, yeah, Mark doesn't have gloves. red gloves. I know who has red gloves. Mm. Okay, we'll yeah. leave that. We'll leave that for people who haven't seen the show yet. But um, again, this is this is the shot that parents need to see and go, oh, oh, this is not one to show to the kids. And it's a really quick Cause... shot, and that eye really comes out. I mentioned that earlier about Mark's head getting exploded and <laughs> eyeballs in space. <laughs> There's a lot of that in the book. Don't worry, Mark's yep. okay. Um, <laughs> but we were but, talking about so much of it being at daylight as well, and you just saying about being in space um, reminded me. That it's just like I think so much of the Earth-based stuff is daylight because there is a good portion of Invincible that takes place in space. So that's obviously it's all like black skies and everything. 
But what's so great about it is the characters are still bright and pop. They don't, yeah. they're not like in like darkness and shadows. It's you not, rarely see not, anyone yeah, in shadows. Not. And when you do, you know that there's someone shady. It's, it's right. intentionally. Yeah. Um, yeah. Usually those, yeah. those people in shadows are on the last page right before the letters column. <laughs> and then they're exactly like, and then there's a reveal or something yeah. Or, yeah and the next issue um i wonder if they're gonna do those great cliffhangers the the um kirkman cliffhangers i hope so i hope so and if they do i, I hope, hope so. they release them weekly because i want people to wonder i want people to like want more yeah um the, that's the thing Especially about invincible with we think is happening in this scene <laughs> right and if you if you are a like if you're a reader of invincible and you're reading issue by issue you fly through them fast. They are yeah. the easiest read. Yeah. And then you don't want to put them down. Um, usually when it comes to Invincible, when I sit down and read, I'll read at least eight in a session. What I like mm. about Kirkman is he, he's not too wordy. Um, I'm, I'm not a very good reader. Uh, reading puts me to sleep. Um, I really only exclusively read comic books <clears throat> and listen to audio books. Um, yeah. So with Kirkman, it's nice because he kind of leaves room for the artist to do their thing. And then, you know, there's not stacks and stacks and stacks of word balloons. This isn't, this isn't, um, Alan Moore. Um, this isn't, or this uh, isn't Grant Michael Morrison. Bendis. Yeah. This isn't Grant <laughs> Morrison. This isn't any of those guys. And it's not putting the book down. It's not saying that it's lesser than it's full. It's no, he probably writes just as much because like, I mean, it depends on how much he gives sort of stage direction essentially, right. but it's yeah, the, it's not dialogue heavy. It's, it's this is this, it lets the art story what's great about invincible the comic and hopefully it comes through in the series is it doesn't take itself seriously it's not too heavy um you can kind of just go with the flow and be entertained and know that it's not trying to be deep it's not trying to be anything uh every Mm. twist and turn is fun and um the action is exciting it's just a good i mean i was about to say that it's slight either it's like it's got something to say right but it's not too deep that like no. you need to worry about things or like it's not too like Every... analogous to real life or it's like it's not got a message sort no. of thing in that way it's just a you know it's a good superhero comic it's everything it's is on the solid, surface solid... everything's yeah. on the surface it's not yeah. it's you don't have to think into it too much like you watch the watchman and you're like oh this could be mean this thing or that thing or yeah have some deeper meaning to life it's not that that. it's this is this is almost like a really good family sitcom (laughs) which plays into so much wow i'm so glad you said that because every trade for uh invincible was named after a sitcom right right every single one like i think like i can't remember which. i think they stopped around invincible war around yeah, that one was just called true. Invisible War. Yeah, um, but like you had like Family Matters, different strokes, like every right. every sitcom from my favorite the past, Martian, my favorite Martian, like yeah. uh, everything, like they were all in there. It was like, one and day it was at almost a like a how how is he still pulling this many sitcom titles? Who's the boss? Like, yeah, volume like eighteen or nineteen before they had to break that trend. Yeah. Um. That eyeball is definitely out of its socket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's going to be too well. And then we see now. blood hit the wall. Um, yeah. And then it looks like, oh, there's a quick shot of Invincible. Oh, man, there's a lot of quick shots here. Oh, yeah, it looks like he's flying through the Battle of New York from Avengers. Yeah. <laughs> um, we see uh, Nolan holding the baseball yep. that's now uh, smoking. Um, yeah, he's he's flying through some crazy stuff. And again, fighting these aliens. So it looks like, I, I mean, I can't remember. Maybe this happens. Maybe it's a montage in the comics or something of him like cleaning up. Maybe this is just going to be a montage from the show of him right. sort of getting used to his powers or something. But you know, they could be going off book. We don't know. Yeah. This could be there. This could be a very Kirkman esque like. Like I said about Battle of New York, maybe that he's going to do, instead of the Battle of New York being this big, massive thing, Mark just comes in, cleans house in one, like, five-minute section, and it's just like, this is what would happen if you had a real superhero. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, Kirkman. Yeah, Which that's definitely Kirkman. Kirkman move. Oh my god! Because if you look at the the ships that he's like throwing off and stuff, yeah, I could see that. <clears throat> that would be hilarious. That Take the piss out of the Avengers. Yeah, but like in a <laughs> hey, we love it, but yeah, our superhero is so much stronger than those guys. Right, right. And he's just a kid who's learning his powers. I cannot recommend anyone who's who's listening to this who hasn't read Invincible. I cannot recommend the book enough. Do it, do it yeah, right this, now. This looks like Chicago. you've got you've got a few weeks. It does. Like with yeah, maybe they don't. Maybe may, they're making it more Chicago. Well, I mean, it doesn't based. have to be where where mark lives because if we look at the shots before when he's falling down towards chicago he gets that from outer space so he's almost in outer space listening for trouble and then goes down to chicago because we know like the pentagon in washington dc exists uh so it doesn't necessarily mean he lives here he just is going here Mm. to to fight these monsters and if someone who can travel at sort of supersonic speeds it doesn't really matter where the trouble is like he can get there it's fine we get the Amazon original Invincible logo, which is the same logo that's been on the book since day one. That's yep, great. Perfect. Uh, and then we yep. get the last shot of Monster Girl. Yeah, like they, such they a put weird... this right at the end. Yeah, it's such a weird thing to put at the end of the thing because it's almost like it should be this big reveal that everyone recognizes and knows. And it's like, yeah, comic fans know. but Well, I mean, this is the first female character we see in the whole trailer. So, I suppose, yeah, we don't see Eve at all, do we? <laughs> no. So it could be Kirkman say, oh, yeah, for girls, too. Like, yeah, it we probably... do have girls. And we have strong girls who can, like, right. essentially hulk out and kick ass. Whereas, I suppose, yeah, if you just showed off Adam Eve, especially if they keep the costume the same, it's almost like, a, oh, really, you're doing... She's dressed in pink. <laughs> yeah, you're doing that sort of costume for your female lead. Have we seen Adam Which, Eve? Yeah, okay. Have we seen the Adam? I design? don't think we have. Hmm. I don't think we have. I th- She's not in the trailer or the clip, so. Okay. If we have, then I've missed it. If yeah, I thought, some screenshots, I thought I somewhere where there was the, um, there was a, a shot of like the character designs that Corey Walker did. Um, it's just a lineup of all the characters. And I want to say Adam okay. Eve is dressed pretty much the same with the one piece sort of uh, bathing suit yep. style. Um, she looks great. They may have toned down her uh, chest area a little bit, I think. Uh, but she still looks just like Adam Eve, um, which is great. Cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, it's... I mean, oh, yeah. I've, I can see it now. I just got that image up. Um, yeah. I mean, all of the characters do. They all look spot on. They right. all look exactly as they do in the books, which, you know, it's hats off to Amazon for sort of having the confidence to go, we bought this property. We want this property we don't want to meddle with it we want you to do what you want to do right um yeah love it yeah and i hope they get to the storyline where her body changes i always thought that was interesting (laughs) it's fantastic and like everything like the way that she's such a a good character like they they do a lot with her over the course of the the series um for good and for ill i uh it's you know she's got a full character arc for sure for this episode, um, I titled it It's a Date, because we now have the date. Um, and I was looking for artwork for the social media and the YouTube, and I almost put the picture, the drawing of Adam Eve on the toilet with the with the pregnancy <laughs> test. <laughs> yep, <laughs> that would be a bit of a, I but don't know, it's, it's going to be a few seasons before we get there, if we do right. get there. There's something, and I'm going to say, there's there's something in the book I wanted to happen. There's two things in the book that I wanted to happen that didn't happen by the end. Um, okay. And I guess for those of you that haven't read the book, and you haven't read the end, but, um, so the, but this is stuff that hasn't happened, so it's not really spoilers. Um, in the first issue, when Mark first gets his superpowers, and I'm sure you'll see this in the show, he throws the trash bag... He goes to throw the trash bag yeah. into the dumpster and it flies into space. Yep. I always wanted the final fight of Mark and whoever his last boss was for that trash to follow <laughs> on him in the middle of the fight. Doesn't it come back down in a, a later issue? Does it? I don't remember because I've been waiting for it forever. I feel like we see it. I feel like we see it at some point. I know I wanted like, it bad enough. We have exactly enough. the same framing. 
Okay. Like the same framing of him throwing the bag at we'll the back of the burger shop. See, this is the kind of thing but you I'm... guys can let us know about on Twitter yeah. or, or Instagram or whatever. Um, don't be mad. Don't be mean about it. But um, <laughs> I'll, um, we're gonna we're both gonna be doing a reread, so we'll know. But let us know if when it comes down. But I always thought like I don't know if you're playing the we game. Maybe see it flying through space or something. Have but ever... I feel like we definitely we do see it again. I'm sure we do. Did you ever play the game Earthworm Jim? Yeah, loved it. Where you where you knock what is it a washing machine or a refrigerator thing to launch it into space and at the last boss it falls down on her. Yeah, that's a really good comparison as well. Like in terms of style, with like the bright colors popping and stuff. Like Earthworm Jim to Invincible. Okay, doesn't feel too dissimilar. Right. The second thing that didn't happen, and um, I'm hoping you got this far into the book. How far are you in the book? Like where where are you? I'm. At? Uh, I'm in the hundreds I'm over an issue yeah i'm over a hundred so we this is so for those of you that haven't read the book eve does get pregnant yeah and that baby is aborted yeah my hope for the book which never happened was how do you abort a fetus that's invincible yeah god and and (laughs) where where, i was i was hoping there would be a storyline where that fetus born from a lab yeah. waste bin grows with a chip on his or her shoulder for being tossed aside by oh. invincible anatomy. Oh. And I feel like it's the ultimate abandoned by your parents. Story. Right. And you got the powers of both of them. Like you're not going to, you're going to yeah. survive that process. You've and got... I, I could have sworn that Kirkman was going to put that in the book. And I don't know if he, maybe thought it was too dark for the book but i feel like or maybe he just didn't get that maybe he had other stories to tell like because he ended the book like i mean it was for for years he was saying he was never going to end it right. like he would end it when he died sort of thing but right. he decided to at one point like shift focus and it's like yeah a, no that's cool do you think that's a storyline he would have done i feel like it's a kirkman storyline Absolutely. I think if if he'd carried on going for another year, two years, three years, whatever, I think eventually he would have got to something similar, if not exactly that. Because right. that, as you said, that screams Kirkman. Right. Can you imagine? It's Can you imagine? Dark. People would be, it's so Ugh. dark. It's yeah, so dark. Yeah, I feel like he probably didn't do it because at that point he was quite famous. <laughs> <laughs> right, but... I mean, he's. <laughs> I feel like he set it up. Obviously, he yeah. set it up. I mean, because almost, I mean, almost, I, it was only a little bit time run. after that he ended up having. Oh, I don't know where you are, but there yeah. is an offspring. I think, okay, so um, um, I don't. I got there. I'm just trying to think of the timeline because I think Eve was probably pregnant before the Walking Dead show started. Right. Um, but I can't remember exactly when. That would have been, and obviously that would have been when Kirkman sort of just got launched into this mega stardom that everyone right. knows who he is, even if they've never read any of his books. If we ever get him on the um, show, I'm asking. Absolutely. I have to know. Uh, if we ever get anyone involved, if they'd heard rumblings. Yeah, I, it was something that I was like, as soon as I was introduced, I'm like, but what if the fetus survived? Yeah, I mean, it's a quarter it, alien. It's a quarter like well, half uh like government experiment right yeah it's 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 only got so far it's a half human yeah no, it could i feel like it could probably survive that yeah interesting yeah. and a lot of people would uh, want that <laughs> fetus so you can even go that angle getting government oh, tests yeah on there that. are certain characters it's... who would have been interested in taking that yeah right so okay um yeah cool. <laughs> i mean we went through the trailer i think i feel like that's it i feel yeah. like we've we've said it yeah um so uh march 26 is when invincible we know it starts um i think yep. either way we're going to be releasing the episodes once a week um i'm not sure what day that's going to be we'll have to um check our schedules the we'll closer we get but yeah. um <clears throat> i kind of was hoping maybe we can get them out on wednesdays because those new comic book uh, day. ideally if we, yeah. if we can yeah of course so we'll have that'd be great uh if, we can. if not if not we'll get it out within the week before the next right. episode for sure <clears throat> but we have a couple of months to decide how we're going to do that and then yeah i don't yeah, i don't know if we'll have another episode 
before then. Maybe we will, but I guarantee you by the time we start um, working on the episodes, I'll have read the first three trades of Invincible again and uh, Same. have a little more information. So yeah, March 26th is, the, is a Friday. Okay. Um, so we should be able to get it out before, like by the following Wednesday, maybe if yeah. we needed to at the very latest. But yeah, yeah, maybe before, maybe sooner. Cool. Well, I look forward to it, man. I cannot wait. Um, me neither just talking about it with you and watching that trailer again through like scene by scene uh, right. I'm, I can't wait I'm excited yeah and I was afraid that like iTunes was going to be like what's the deal with this podcast that only did one episode but between like election stuff and holidays and uh, just just <laughs> everything in life and just like much. the sheer like lack of information on the show um, there wasn't yeah. really much to go on but now that they're starting to pump up and promote the show more um, I'm more excited I'm more excited than ever yeah. So, and I'm glad I'm glad to have a couple months to uh, to reread the first three trades. I might, I'm, I'll probably yeah, I mean, go farther than that, but I at least we'll get to that one. I, I I'll probably have read those three by this time next week, to be honest. Cool. And if you're hearing this and you don't know already, uh, go to invincipod.com. That'll have links to our Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, and then it also yep. have every episode there. Oh, and YouTube, YouTube. Yes, um, and that's, anywhere you want to watch it. Yeah. And that's yeah. at Invincipod everywhere. So That's great. Yeah, though that, that, that handle, that net handle, kind of what caused this whole mess to happen. <laughs> well, as soon <laughs> as I saw it was, it was available, available everywhere, I'm like, oh, well, now we have to do the show. And then a few hours later, we had a logo, and at that point, we just sort of had to do a podcast, really. <laughs> Dude, I love it. I love it. It was so, it was such a, like, fever dream of emotions and just it was <laughs> wanting to do it like a 12 hour span of going should we do a podcast to yeah shit let's record a podcast right now <laughs> sweet um it's great well let's go ahead and stop this podcast right now um i don't have a sign off and i don't know if i do i but, i think uh, i i was thinking about this earlier on and i was just gonna end with uh keep looking at the skies perfect